Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and welcome to a new season of Adventures in Compliance. In this season, we are going to review the short stories which appeared in the Strand Magazine from July 1891 to June 1892 and were collected in the book, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Over the next 12 episodes, I will be reviewing each story and mine them for leadership, compliance, and ethical lessons. In this episode, we take up The Adventure of the Blue Carnbuckle, which appeared in Strand Magazine on or in January 1892. The leadership lessons from this story are particularly interesting, and I know you'll enjoy both the story, commentary, and some of the key leadership lessons. Our story begins on Boxing Day, when Holmes receives a particular old hat from Peterson, a commissioner. The hat was found next to a Christmas goose, abandoned after its owner had a skirmish with some ruffians. Peterson also found a blue gem in the goose's crop, which turns out to be the blue carbuncle, a precious stone which was reported missing a few days earlier. Intrigued by the series of events, Holmes and Watson embark on an investigative adventure. They start by tracing the goose back to a local poultry shop, which leads them to the supplier who had given the goose as a part of a group to a hotel. The hotel staff recognizes the goose and tells Holmes it was given to a Mr. Henry Baker. When Henry Baker arrives to claim his hat and goose at Baker Street, Holmes realizes that Baker knows nothing about the blue carbuncle. Further investigations lead Holmes to a James Ryder, a hotel attendant, who has confessed his crime after being confronted. Ryder had persuaded a maid at, in the room of the Countess of Mokar's hotel room to let him steal the blue carbuncle. Fearing detection, he had hidden the gem inside a goose at his sister's poultry shop, but the bird had gotten mixed up with others, thus ending up with Henry Baker. At the end of the story, Holmes lets... James Ryder go, considering him a small, terrified man who will not likely survive a prison sentence. The Blue Carbuckle, a jewel of great value, is recovered, but the story concludes without stating whether it was returned to its rightful owner. This story is another tale that allows you, the reader, to set forth on a voyage around the City of London from Victorian England, this time with an emphasis on the city's pubs. Many public houses appear in the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and some will elude even the most redoubtable modern-day detective. These include the Alpha Inn from the Adventures of the Blue Carmuckle. No reader will ever unerringly guide you to its location. But if you cross the road from the British Museum and make your way to the corner of one of the streets which run into Holborn, Street, the museum tavern is likely enough in the hostelry which we can reenact the revelries enjoyed by Henry Baker and the Goose Club. There had been a pub on this site since at least the early 18th century, originally called the Dog and Duck, so named for from a hunting cry. Its lease was issued by the Duke of Bedford in September 1854 and permitted the landlord to open the museum tavern opposite a newly opened British Museum. Another interesting aspect was the man who was framed for this crime, one James Horner. Any other time of year, Holmes would have simply sent for Lestrade immediately. But this is Christmas, and Holmes was merely hired to return the hat to Henry Baker. The decision to involve himself in the rest of the mystery was but his own. If the police want to find the true thief. Holmes is certain the case against Horner will be dropped. He decides to let them do the legwork. As I noted, extracting only Ryder's pledge to leave the country immediately, Holmes allows the men man to go free. 
So what are the leadership lessons from this story? Number one, attention to detail. Holmes is known for his attention to detail, and this is evident in the adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. He can solve the mystery by paying close attention to small details that others have overlooked. Compliance leaders and professionals can learn from this by focusing on the details and not overlooking anything that can be important in your compliance program. Number two, and this is most applicable for the compliance professional, problem-solving skills. Obviously, Holmes is a master of problem-solving, and this is demonstrated in the story as he unravels the mystery of the missing gemstone. Compliance professionals and leaders can learn from this by developing their own problem-solving skills and approaching challenges with a creative and analytical mindset. Number three, teamwork. Although Holmes is the main detective in the story, he works with others, i.e., Dr. Watson, to solve this case. Compliance leaders and compliance professionals can learn from this by recognizing the importance of teamwork, both in your compliance team, but actually in the broader corporate setting and build strong relationships with all of your colleagues. Number four, adaptability. Throughout the story, Holmes demonstrates his ability to adapt to changing circumstances and adjust his approach as needed. Compliance leaders and compliance professionals can learn from this by being flexible and open-minded, and recognizing there may be multiple solutions to a problem. And number five, honesty and integrity. Despite the temptation to keep the gemstone for himself, Holmes returns it to its rightful owner, obviously demonstrating honesty and integrity. Compliance professionals and compliance leaders obviously have to be honest and transparent, and communicating these values are going to be a critical part of any best practices compliance program, and indeed, will help build an overall culture of compliance within your organization. This story, uh, having come out around Christmas time, is always a fun one to review and revisit at Christmas because it shows not only the good cheer at Christmas in Victorian England, but the Goose Club itself Henry Baker being roughed up by some ruffians and his hat knocked out. The observation by Holmes on the misfortunes of Henry Baker, yet providing him with a goose to take home to his bride, uh, really helps speak to the time of the year. And of course, the final resolution where Holmes lets the true criminal go free, and yet uh, Horner is released so that he can be with his family on Christmas. It's a fun story. It's an imaginative story. It's a story that uh, really shows how the smallest attention to detail can lead to larger truths, larger answers, and even larger questions that you may need to ask going forward. So I heartily recommend this story. I hope you will uh, read it, and I hope you will enjoy it as well. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Adventures in Compliance. It was a ton of fun to reread and re-enjoy this story, and I hope you'll take the opportunity to do so as well. I hope you'll join me again next week where we take up the episode, The Adventure of the Speckled Band. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever great podcasts are listened to. If you are a lover of Sherlock Holmes and would like to come on an upcoming podcast and talk about your favorite short story with me, I'd love to have you. As you could probably tell, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I find a lot of compliance lessons learned in the Sherlock Holmes oeuvre. Adventures in Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.